Hello again. A new day, a new project. Well, it's really summer. And I had this in my mind for a really long time. And as you may see, I have over here a very simple PWM solar charge controller. Th this is a very simple one. But as far, I found it it's one of the best I ever had. So it's working marvelous. It's uh, stopping at the right voltage and it's charging with the right amps and so on. Of course, the limits, you know, the price limits and the power it can support. I had this described before. I did some modification, make it a little bit powerful and uh, so far it's working great. What I want to do today, as you may see, I'm still having a charge over there, like 1.79, 1 1.10 amps to the batteries. The batteries are pretty charged now. 12.9 so we had uh, we had a full sunshine day and I have this pack of batteries here deep cycle batteries 250 amps totally so far they are pretty okay for 600 maybe 700 watts hour daily consuming around 700 uh, watts daily and uh, I also have this, uh, you see there the stripes? Okay, this is LED stripes and that's uh, my light for the night and it's working great so far. Mm. You know, I tried to understand how these things are working and I was thinking for so long to test it with the little oscilloscope I have. You remember this is uh, a very small basic uh, oscilloscope DSO138 so what I want to do now is to connect the oscilloscope to different points what I have been connecting now this wire here it's coming straight from the panel so far I can see when the speaks are coming the panel the solar panel is disconnected from the the charging and uh, it tends to uh, to apply or to have a, a higher voltage um, sometimes you can feel it on the multimeter too and uh, that's how it's working to the entrance okay so here we are next morning really nice weather so my panels are up and running the other ones are already having 300 watts here and the batteries was under load all night long but I still have minimum voltage 12.08 and that's nice and let's see what's happening when I'm connecting the panels here we go down there let's consider that we are on 5 volts so there are the spikes when when the, the panel is disconnected and we can see the peaks and uh, if you consider this peaks means that the panel is disconnected certain period and that gives pulse width modulation you can see we don't have a permanent charging the little uh, charge controller checking the battery the status of the batteries and is connecting and disconnecting the panel by this kind of pulses to have the right charging well, let's go back now and try to see what's happening to the batteries yes we can see some pulses too but they're not so regular like I was expecting or maybe my little oscilloscope is not doing the, the right job anyway this is very clear that the voltage is going up and down with a certain uh, period but we can see very clear there is difference over there and these are charging these are charging uh, pulses to the battery and uh, I show how uh, pulse wide modulation is working. Can you see? I got here uh, my little oscilloscope, and then 
over here I have another small device and this one will generate pulse white signals and it says 10 bit P white M P white generation we can see very clear the duty cycle now it's zero because it's zero percent modulation and let's turn it to 10 percent and you can see here very clearly it's working it's on for 10 percent and it's off for 90 percent and this happens this modulation it's happening for they say hundreds of times per second and uh, then let's make it 25 25 percent you see 25 percent it's on 75 percent it's off okay then let's make it 50 and now you see very well that it's half and half half on half off half on half off and let's go to let's say 80 percent you can see it it's for 80 percent on and for 20 percent it's off and if we go to 100 percent modulation that means that all the power transfer is going to the batteries or to the inverter let's call it to to the to the load i may call it to the load okay let me see if i can find how many times this goes for a second but it's 7.1 kilohertz so it's 7000 hertz so this thing this duty modulation this duty cycle is happening 7000 times per second and this way all the power transfer from the power source you know in our case the solar panel to the battery or to the inverter in another case it can be very very well controlled so now let's say we have a lead acid battery or a battery doesn't really matter but let's take a lead acid battery after the night the battery went to let's say 11.5 volts the charge controller will sense that the voltage is down here that's why we'll push all the power almost like that all the power to the battery so let's say now we have almost 100 percent let's make it 100 percent to the battery now it's going up of course the charge controller it's checking for the voltages in the same time it's going up pretty well let's say to 14.4 value and uh, why we need that because we need to equalize the cells too so when it's hitting the maximum point over here then goes down to a float voltage and how are we gonna do that slowly and slowly the duty cycle is getting more and more relaxed and once we get this point here let's say 13.7 volts or around then the solar charger it's getting maybe let's say to 30 percent something like this so this peaks over here now it's only keeping the battery on float Of course if we apply a load over here let's say 100 watts load or inverter or anything then you'll see charge controller is getting back to a maximum or as much as possible modulation to recover the lost voltage and we've having this uh, width of the pulses the charging control can be done really nice so we have the solar panel over here 
and we have of course the DC in this R box let's say it's the charge controller and this goes to our first step and that's the pulse sweep modulation charge controller this one it's receiving the power from the power supply which is connected to the battery and in the same time it's taking the power from the panel through the pulses down to the battery the battery in the same time it's under vision by a sensor control unit and this one it's sensing the voltages the state of the battery and anything else uh, necessary for changing the ratio here the duty cycle we've been talking before so let's say if it's a if it's a deployed battery it's an empty battery the duty cycle it's almost 100 percent you see and this one it's commanding the charge controller the first step over here the first level usually there's a lot of MOSFETs in here to have all this full charge current to the battery you know by time of course the battery is loading and the voltage is going up to like I said before 13.7 or something anyway then the sensor is checking the voltage and it's sending a command to the power supply over here and this one at the same time is changing the ratio in the in the, con in the PWM control charger and slowly and slowly it's it's disconnecting the DC running from the panel to the battery that's the best way to do it and uh, I think this is a kind of idea of mine you know the most uh, the solar inverters are it tie nowadays because uh, it's much cheaper you know just to have it uh, to AC and I was thinking how to stop the inverter to give more power than the house is needed or you know the, the load is needed so I found this it's a very simple way to do it with a sensor checking all the time the current from the inverter to the grid of course here somewhere is the house because of this then it can control the sweep modulation in in a way in the same way like charging a battery you know and let a certain level of power to the inverter just enough to fit the local circuit or the house in my case and uh, that will avoid to leak any power to the grid it's very simple to do that with a, with a hull sensor or a magnetic sensor you know that kind of coil sensor but anyway that's the story about uh, pull sweep modulation and uh, it's very simple to understand that I, I have to say again that this pulses are very fast it, in my case it's happening in several thousand times per second and this is a 10 bit PMW generator I had some tests with uh, with the solar charger I'm using now I couldn't get a very clear wave like this you know when I checked the battery but um, I'll try with a better oscilloscope. I think that's it for now and I'll be back soon with some other projects. Thank you. Bye-bye.